So what I'm going to do today is um, I'm going to show you how to make a fairly straightforward cookser cup from a piece of birch wood or in this case um, a piece of sycamore and all we're going to use are these tools. So of course we have the, the carpenter's axe and you can tell it's a carpenter's axe, it's like this very wide flare and a very fine blade called the hollow grind. It's a very very sharp. Second very important tool and, and what differentiates its bowl making from its spoon carving is the use of this gouge. This is a, a very fine gouge, it's uh, mainly made by Ashley Isles. It's um, extremely sharp and it has this bevel here at the back. Very strong blade. We also have um, some finer tools. We have um, a, a rather relaxed curved um, knife that we use for, for, for trimming up some of the outside that we can't reach by the other tool, the push knife. Now it's really the push knife, so it's, a, it's kind of like a, a workhorse for getting the outside of your cooks or bowl carved nice and cleanly. This is really just for getting in behind the handle and making it nicer. And finally, um, a rather more crooked blade um, for, for getting into some of the areas inside the bowl that you may have missed um, when you were doing um, your gouge work. Now another tool um, which we've also found to be essential and is kept here at the back of the workshop is one of my favourite tools. This is called a Twicker Cam. And in fact, this is in fact um, invented in Wales. Uh, it was, it's made in, in Wales by a maker there. And essentially it is a fantastic tool for making bowls and, and cups. Um, the Welsh, I should say, are, well, they've been making bowls for centuries. And, and, and it's very fitting that they should have come up with such a tool. Now this tool gives a lot of torque, a lot of ability to, to really get inside your bowl and the twisting action and the strength that you can get with both hands means that you can really easily gouge out a nice smooth interior to your cookser. Okay, the tools. What you also need is plenty of strong coffee and uh, some snacks because this is going to take quite a while to do. Now you may be wondering, what on earth am I talking about? What on earth is a cookser bowl? Well, actually cooksers are made by uh, the Sami people, they're the nomadic people in Finland and Lapland. Now, the, the, this is a, actually a cookser cup, and we're not going to be making this today, we're making a bowl. But basically the principle of the cookser is that it's made of wood, and um, very often it's made from birch burls. So a burl in the birch is, is where uh, you get a lump or hump grows on the outside of the trunk and inside there are thousands and thousands of, of, of little initials for twigs in there and what happens is that the wood is very very dense and hard. And not only is it dense and hard it is also um, has less of the flavour of wood in it so very much reduced flavour of wood which can impart its, its flavour to the food and drink that you use. So that is a little bit of a health warning with cooksers is that they will make your food and drink a little bit woody. We're not going to use a birch bowl today because they're very hard to come by. But what we are going to do is we're going to use a piece of sycamore. Now sycamore is a very nice piece of wood. It's a very nice grain. It shows well when you, when you stain it um, with um, oils like walnut oil or tongue oil. And um, it's, it's a very easy to carve and it doesn't split. So it's actually a perfect medium. Uh, most of the bowls that we make earlier in the year when we had supplies of it were made from birch and birch is another, just the birch wood itself, not the burl or anything like that, but just the birch wood itself is just perfect for making cups. Very nice grain, very straight grain, very easy to work. Now, the cup that we're going to make will just be having a straightforward handle and I'm rather embarrassed because um, we just made this movie on, a, on, a, on an off chance and in fact we don't have any cooks or bowls and you know why because I've sold them all on Etsy. Now I spent quite a bit of time preparing this wood um, from the from the main stump um, 
as you can see this has been cut it's actually been cut by a chainsaw now they wouldn't have had that 500 years ago but actually we do have cross cut saws but um i'm getting a bit old to be cutting that by myself and it would take hours to do but if you want to do that do it fully the right way go ahead and do it now what we've also done is to trim off some of the additional wood at the side that we don't need now we're making a 15 centimeter cooks a bowl but so you can centimeter diameter cooks a bowl so we don't need this additional material and any additional material that you don't need in your bowl you should remove because doing it manually will take a long time now um, we use this tool here the axe uh, for a lot of our work and we just go ahead and do a little bit of splitting off down there the edges and the sides that we've been splitting away with the wood splitter just getting a little bit a little bit trimmed up so the amount of material that we can remove at this stage is all good stuff Now I've got to remember with axes, never put them down on metal tables or anything near metal. Always put them down on wood. I've got a little stool back here. But never leave them resting on your raised chopping block because that's a recipe for disaster. You can knock it off and cut your foot. Now what we've also done is to split out the, the, the pith. Now if you leave the pith, which is right in the centre of the wood, if you leave the pith, it will act as a focus for, for cracking. And splitting so it's really essential that you you remove the pith first we split that out with a splitting tool so um, that was one of the first things to go and what is left is, is is a fairly is a fairly clean surface we've got some material here we need to just clean up and I'm going to do that with the axe here we go so I'm just planing away you'll notice that my hand here is totally out of the way from the path of the axe and that is a principle that you use throughout any, any wood carving. You must always keep your hand away from the path of the axe and avoid raising it above the, the job. And definitely nothing like this with your hands dangling down onto the path of the axe. It's a recipe for disaster. Don't do it. So here we are. I'm, I'm just planing it off a little bit, getting rid of some of a little bit of imperfections and trying to get as flat a working surface as possible before we start. Like so. Noticing any splits in the wood here, we'll try and avoid them when we do the marking out, which I'll just show you in a minute. But at the moment we're just getting it as clean as possible and we're going to decide on where we're going to put um, uh, where we're going to put the uh, the bowl and where we're going to put the handle of the bowl because if you know if you've ever seen cooks of bowls or cups you'll know that they have a little handle a little fish tail handle which um, the nomadic people the Sami people um, use to tie a leather strap onto um, as a carrying strap so we're going to decide which surface are we going to go for the surface in the heart or are we going to go to the surface on the outside this is the outside here this is the bark side of the wood that i'm planing away now so it's a terrible split here so we definitely want to avoid that so the head of the head of the cup is going to be here but i'm beginning to think that i would like to to put the the top of the bowl, the rim of the bowl, on this side, the side of the, the, the bar. So there are all these little decisions that you need to make when you're preparing your wood. So what I'm going to do now, just placing my axe down very carefully here on this table behind me, it's going to start marking, going to start marking out, okay? Now, 
now from the side from away from the um, the crack which is this we're going to put the head of the bowl it's not quite 14 centimeters but I think I think we might try and prep that down to 15 centimeters because I just I just think it's going to work better if we if we work from the side to be honest the blade like this with any luck well we will we will try and we will work around this crack what we found is that you've really got to work with your piece of wood and um, it's it's not something out of being q so you just got to work with what you've got that's just about fine seven uh, let's just place that at 14 centimeters and have done with it because i really think this bowl is better off going that way as around to be honest i really do so just drawing a nice center line down the wood here is part of the start of marking out Maybe I just let's just keep it to the center of the wood itself rather than to force it. And just draw a nice center line right down the middle like that. Now from there we then mark out the uh, the bowl, which now of course is going to be 40 centimeters, not 50, and the center point at seven centimeters. And here we are, we're going to put in our center here 14 centimeters 14 centimeters there we go nice and clear like that now what I then do is just is just use the ruler to mark out the circle of the um, of the bowl itself so I'm just using Putting it right there at, at seven and a half, seven. Oh, I have to remember it's not 15, but it's 14 now. It's seven. I'm just drawing a little tick mark all the way around here, like that. Little tick mark. Maybe a little tick mark there in the middle. In the middle. There you go, up there. I suppose I could find myself a tin of paint or something, an old tin of paint that um, is a, about the right size and so on, but, but I, I, um, I find it very difficult. The, the 14 and the, the 15 centimeter cooks are very popular because they're just that right, the right size and it's difficult to find something the right diameter to draw around, just lying around. So I found that this method is the surefire method of getting the diameter of cups that you want. Right, so what we've done now, it was just, because this is like, you know, it, we're supposed to be working in a woodland here, a forest, and you know, things are a little bit rough and ready, and we just get the hairy lines, as I call them, and just sketch them in, like that, around here, there you go around here watching that you don't drop the piece of wood on your foot just draw the hairy lines as best you can around to give you a nice circle for the starting point of your cookser so as i say all the cooksers have this little fishtail tail fishtail handle 
for putting your, your leather strap on. So what I do is I mark that in here. So I just start out here, five centimeters, two and a half centimeters, five centimeter mark here at the top. And that's gonna be the top of your, of, your, of your handle, as it were. You'll see in a minute what I mean. Then I usual, usually, at about two centimeters, I make that the dip part of the handle. And then at six centimeters is the end of the handle. So it looks like we're going to get rid of a lot of that chipped wood. So in there, in the middle, um, we like to do about two centimeters, four centimeters, three centimeters. Let's do three today. Why not? The waste part, the sort of waistline part of the cup. So like that here, you'll see in a minute what I mean. And then at the end, and we usually make it about three centimeters at the end, so the widest part of the fishtail. And then what we do is we just come round here from where we started in here. We come round and we just draw a line like that. And on the other side, we come round, starting about there, come round and we curve the tail so as it curves around from the bowl straight into the tail so it curves around so it sweeps around nicely and then the back part of the tail sweeping around like that just checking because it soon gets on the wonk if we're not careful Yeah, so we've gone a little bit wonk there. So it's best to get as accurate as possible at the start. Always try and get as accurate as possible at the start because that is the lines that you draw now will be the lines that you follow throughout the making of the cookser. Okay? So as you see, we've got a nice fishtail handle, a nice round, in this case, 14 centimeter um, cookser bowl. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mark out the material that we're going to remove from the cookser before we start. Now, making bowls and cups and spoons, it's all about doing things step by step because if you had a machine, you could simply put it in a bandsaw and cut all the way around this. Now, you can't do that manually with just an axe. So what you've got to do is remove pieces of material step by step. So what what we're going to do is, is we're going to remove this material here and this material here, leaving this sort of Star Trek. I like to think about it, Star Trek Enterprise in the middle. Now what we're also going to do is going to cut off some of the material here at the end. Now I like to get, I just, well, I like to get everything nice and lined up and ready before I start. So I like to, to get it all squared away like that right so what we've what we've done we've got our star trek enterprise in there as, it, as you can see and we're also going to cut off these end parts so we we reduce the material that we have to carve later on right from the start so step by step process okay so what we're doing now is removing that material that we've marked out so so the bit of material on the right and left side of the star trek part now, what we're doing here is, um, rather than trying to cut straight away down, down that angle, we're angling it off, pushing it up against the back bulk of this um, chopping block, and chopping away like that at the side, by the line, you see. Back there, back there. Leaving this little sort of ridge in the middle, and which we then remove. Like that. So by step by step, we're cutting, 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 down and down and down. Into the wood. As you see, my hand is well out of the way up here.
easy. At an angle here, down to the my line. Angle here. And then in the middle. <laughs> That's why you keep your hand out of the way. So making a cup to bowl or cup is quite a hard physical process. Um, quite visceral. I mean, who needs the gym? Now what we're also watching is then is that we're keeping it straight all the time. So at the bottom, every now and again, look at the bottom and see is the line straight, which it is in this case. And then, of course, we go round to the other side. And we do the other side. Bit of a knot. Right. Join you back in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Well, as you can see, I've um, stripped off to my T-shirt. And uh, to be honest, that's... One reason is because this is pretty hard work. Now, as I said, if you had a bandsaw, you'd cut around this in no time. However, with just an axe, it takes a bit of time. Now, I've, what you can see is I've uh, cut, um, I've cut away the material on the right and left. Uh, and what I've done is I've now just, um, just left the Starship Enterprise and I'm gonna take off this last piece. And you can also see that, um, I've more or less left behind the crack and I'm hoping that we will see him off when we start carving the, the tail of that cookster. But um, yeah, it's got a little bit larger, so I'm a little bit worried about it. Anyway, let's soldier on, soldier on, nothing left venture, nothing gained as they always say. So what I'm doing is just charming away material going into actually going inside my line oh it looks like some bad weather's coming and I'm just cutting away down that angle at the front of the bowl like that a deep bowl so I'm going to carve away over seven centimeters of material see quite hard work and what I'm doing is I'm doing it step by step bit by bit You don't chip at the bottom, so don't run your chopping all the way down to the bottom. Just turn it over and take that last bit off. Because chipping is one of the problems. You just chip away a piece at the back. So, so there we are. Um, we've chipped around um, this part of the the cookster, and we we reduced it to the sort of Starship Enterprisey type of um, bit that we've marked out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start carving away towards the tail of our cutter handle. So we just start off here, carefully carving down round the bowl and down into this area here, which we're going to carve out to make what I call the dolly. And it's the dolly that we finally put into um, into another different raised chopping block 
part of the garage work. So this is just sort of the rough axing out. So we start with a cut here, turn it round, and we then carefully cut it. Cut it down like that. Yep. Turn it round. This is just an iterative process of easing the cut around the cuts of bowl. Once it's done cutting up here, cutting in the middle, cutting the back. Just trying not, not to have to cut the whole thing all at once. So we're just wearing away, wearing away until we finally get down to the cooked tail part. Useful piece, useful way of doing it is to have a press pocket up there on your raised block like that. That's what these end parts are for. And, and just prop it up. But just to try and show you what I'm doing, I'll keep it down here on the flat. Kind of again. So here I'm chopping down, keeping my hand away. But you've just got to be aware that you are quite close to your hand at this point. that you're keeping the bowl walls of the bowl straight lots of chips flying back in so just carving in here Now until you get down to this part here where now you can actually back what's called back axing into the into the cookser. So we can now take the axe and back axe carefully. a bit of a mess at the moment. Again, still wear away, hands are all the time. stage the better the less to do later on you've got to remember okay so now we've cut we've now got a solo nine okay so um, as I said before we, we've cut out our Starship Enterprise and uh, now we've got to do some further marking out 
Now, what we what we have to do is to um, put on the back of our cookser. We need to mark out the size of the base. Now we need to be really careful that we get the base to be lined up exactly with the the top of the cookser. Otherwise, what will happen is that the bowl will be out of whack. It just be totally out of shape. So. The way you do that is to draw the line and continue it round to the back of the cookser and then make sure that the centre of the, the, the cookser bowl and the centre of the back of the cookser is exactly aligned. Once you've done that, you then draw out the circle of the base. Now that, in this case, if we've got a 14 centimetre cookser bowl, the base, I usually make it just a little bit less than... Um, than halfway so that's about there uh, well in this case I've decided to do about halfway it's about halfway then about seven centimeters in diameter the other thing that we need to mark out is the inflection point the point at the, at the on the side of the, the cookser bowl where the, the bowl from the straight side of the cookser curved down into the bowl shape now here uh, what I've done is I've marked about three and a half centimeters which is just under halfway towards the whole thickness of the cookser which is about seven or eight okay and that that tends to be about right so now we're really ready to start carving out the um, the, the bowl part of the cookser essentially now here what we what we've got essentially is that um, I like to, to carve the um, cookser in a way where you've got, let's see, I hope you can see, you've got three points in which you carve. You've got this middle point here, right? So basically we're creating three angles. The angle in the middle, the angle that takes us down towards the base of the cookser, and then another angle that takes us up to the straight side of the cookser. So now what we try and do is to take round the base of the cookser, the bottom of the cookser, round the base. So keeping those three points here, here and here, we're moving it round you can see what I'm doing, I'm moving it round, moving it round, moving it round, using our inflection point line as a guide. Until we've removed the front part and we get this sort of prow shape. Same on the other side. We need to mark out the inflection point, which is uh, here. Mark it round. Mark it round. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So you've got one. Two, three. One, two, three, like that. As we curve it round towards the base of the cookser. Hand is nice and out of the way. Just curving it round now. It's quite tough. We've got a lot of material here. Finally, just taking the front like that, just a little bit up there. Checking at the front to see whether we've got it about the same on each side. Take that up a little bit. 
this one here just to curve it around a little bit more. So it's equal. So we've got it just about equal on both sides. So around, now we're now to go round to the back towards the back. So again, the same principle. You've got three cuts. One here, one here, and one here. Cutting it round roughly towards the base of the cookster. There's the inflection point. Curving it round. A bit more force here. Until we've got it round to the back of our cookster, like that. So it's placing that there. So what we can see here is that we've we've curved round the buff, the base of the of the cookster. So we've got a roughly a rough shape that is about similar on both sides. I'm going to do this piece here, carve this out, and then I'm going to just make everything else just go around and, and try and get make sure that I've got it as close to the shape of the outside that I want. Three cuts, one, two, three, middle cut up towards the inflection point and then down towards the base. Yeah, that's a bit of a knot there. Just take it around one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Thing. But we're going to go around now and we're going to. So, as you can see, what we've done now is uh, we've, had to, we've changed to a different type of raised chopping block. This type of chopping block has two ends to it essentially, so as we can then um, wedge very firmly, we can very firmly wedge um, the cookser bowl into it while we're doing our, um, our gouge work. So um, you'd really need to make cooks as you really need to have the, the raised chopping block that we had uh, before and also this chopping block. So you'd have to make both chopping blocks. So as you can see, um, we've now got the cookser um, uh, carved out. The back has been carved out roughly. And we're going to wedge it in here, ready to do some gouge work. So just to, just to wedge it in, it's very, very simple. We just wedge it in like that. Very, very easy. Now, before we start, um, before we start, what we're going to do is just very quickly. God, the rain's been terrible today. Is is just quickly draw about half a centimetre line, just half a centimetre in from the main um, mark for the external edge of the cookster bowl. And we just mark it all the way round. Like that. All the way round. All the way round. So as we have an inner line now, which is essentially going to be our guide mark for the gouge work. Like that. So 
here we are we're going to use our gouge um, as I said before very nice Ashley Isles gouge and we're going to use the mallet here which is um, just, a, just a, an ordinary carpenter's wooden mallet well it can be a wooden mallet but in this case we've got a rubber mallet so basically what we're going to do is we're going to tap a little crescent shape cut all the way around following exactly the line we've created on the inside of the cookster. It's going all the way around, making sure each crescent joins up with the neighbouring crescent. Now the reason why we do this is that if when we come to carve the middle part of the bowl what we don't want are cracks splintering across what will be the edge of our bowl. Just like that. There we go. Almost there. Like that. Now, to start off the bowl, what we need to do is to just take out the centre part, um, take out a, a wedge out of the centre part of the, of the bowl. So, we just so going into the middle, we do a smaller flower-shaped set of presents, as it were. Like this, like that again, again joining up. If there's any slackening off of there, just to make sure it's solid. And so, some nice hard taps now needed to just dislodge this center part. Like that and it just relieves the tension in the wood then and it makes it now possible to start edging out towards the marked out inner edge like that so just from moving a little piece like that going all the way around our way up to our inner marking point. Just doing a dance around the, the chopping block. Of course being a 15 centimeter cookster, or should I say to be strictly correct, a 14 centimeter cookster, we need to do an awful lot more gouge work than we would on the smaller ones that we make for only about 11 centimeters. So, so we're almost at there, almost at the initial marks now. So there we are, we're at the, we're at the initial marks, we've, we've moved the interior into as far as the outer, the inner markings that we made, and now we're just going over those marks, those crescent shaped marks we made earlier on, we're going over them and taking it right back to the inner line that we've made.
being very careful to make sure we don't go over our line. choose a thunderstorm to make this video but a woodsman or a woodwoman's work can't always stop for the weather especially if you've got customers that have ordered bowls which in this case I've got to make two of them uh, time and time makes the wrong time So what I'm now doing is I'm going back into the centre and just carving out another chunk. And then white making that larger again. Making sure I don't dislodge the cup so. the ultimate green gym I can assure you. So finally what we've done we've we've removed a nice shape out of the middle of our bowl now. Let's see if we can put that so you can see. Um, so as you can see we we carved out the centre part of the bowl now and um, very very shallow and we haven't really just about started. But what I'll do is um, I'll do a bit more and we'll come back and we can see where we've got to. Okay, so what I've been doing is I've been slowly carving out the centre of the bowl um, with the guy, just hammering around, just just taking a layer out, moving it up, taking it out, moving it up, taking out, taking out another layer. And finally I've got down to, I don't know, we're well, going to measure it. Now one of the things, we were battering away here with a mallet and a very sharp chisel. We've got to make sure that um, we don't go through the bottom of the bowl. Now, here I'm just checking the depth. We're about four centimetres. Now the total depth we've got there is about seven, seven and a half centimetres. So we've got, we've got plenty of room still to go. So once we've taken out about four or five centimetres, we can start to um, roughly carve out the, the inner shape of the bowl. Now for that we, we, we don't we, we stop hammering the poor chisel and we, we, we start to do some pushing, just pushing. It's a very sharp, this is where you need a very sharp chisel. So basically I'm just pushing down all around and we're gouging into the wall so as we then match the inner wall with the outer hashed out outer wall that we've done with the out. Now, as I said earlier about the green gym, this really is hard. Now, it's one thing hammering with a mallet, but this part of it is really good for your abs. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to do some training for your abs, forget all this weight training stuff. Just come and do a cook's a bowl. That's really, really great. Now what you'll find is that the that the sides of the bowl are much easier to do than the top and bottom end. Now the reason for that is that you're cutting directly then across the fibres. So here you're at 90 degrees to the fibres, much, much easier. 
here at this end and at this end, it's really very hard. And so you really do need to put quite a lot of force into it at the end. So as we're pushing down, we're also turning the blade inwards in a sort of a scooping action. It's like we're scooping out the wood from the walls. And every now and again we just check to see how we're getting on with the shape on the inside. Is it matching that of the outside? You just use your fingertips. You can say, yeah, that's getting that's getting near to it. And so when you've achieved that with one part of it, then you move to another part. Again, gouging into the walls. See, that's still very, very thick. Easy at the sides, not so easy at these top ends. See? It's much harder because you're cutting right across the fibres. The great thing about wood is that wood fibres are fantastically strong and light. But of course, when you're making a bowl, you soon know when you're going across the grain, when you're going across the grain. There you go, you see that the side, it's all fine and dandy. But you get round to here, it's much harder. There you go. No need for the gym. You don't need to buy any gym membership. Just be careful when you're removing material that's caught on the blade of the chisels. These chisels really are very sharp and I find it very, very easy to cut your finger. You hardly notice it. Okay, well I'll just go around and get to the point where we were gouging out the middle, so come back later. Okay, now we've um, we've kind of roughed out, let me show you. We've roughed out the inside of the um, of the cooks bowl now using a gouge. And what we've tried to do is just to, to thin the walls around the sides and the lower part so that the part where they were at their infection point, just try to get that matching um, the the outer the outer um, curve of the bowl, if you like. Now, at the moment, it's pretty rough, and the bottom of the bowl is flat. So what we need is our secret weapon, and that is the Twicker cam. Now, where did I put it? Here we go. Now, as I said, the Twicker cam was developed in Wales, and Wales, as it happens, is the epicenter of wooden bowl making, wooden bowl and wooden spoon making at one time. So these tools are um, quite hard to come by and, and individual makers like um, uh, um, Nick Westerman and so on, who also live in Wales, they actually, they actually still make these to order. But the, the order list can be very, very long. The waiting list can be very, very long. Now, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm using the curved blade of the Twitter cam to kind of um, carve out the bottom of the bowl. And that's to give the bowl the, these kind of curved shape, a pleasing curved shape at the bottom that matches the side walls. Now, of course, because this is a, a large bowl, there's an awful lot more of this type of work involved. And what I'm doing is, I'm garving out the bottom, but I'm also trying to march, match the curve of the bottom with that that I've already established at the sides. Now the action you use is a kind of twisting action. It's the best way to use the, the Twiki cam. So it's the, the blade, the curved part of the blade, shears into the fibres because at the moment what you're doing is you're working at 90 degrees the fibres most of the time and then when you come down to the 
the ends. Slightly different approach. It's more of a, a twisting action like that. If that can, you can see this, a twisting action like that, like you're scooping out ice cream. Only it's a lot harder. I sometimes put gloves on at this point because the blade really is extremely sharp, and you don't want to bleed all over your nice ball. It really is, you hardly notice your cut back. So, what I've got now is a ridge developing in the bottom of the bowl. You can see. Um, we've got to be able to, there's this ridge here, forming here. And what we've got to do is to clear that ridge. And that's going to take a lot of work. So uh, I might see you later. Okay, so what we've managed to do is um, we've uh, carved out this bowl. So we've used the Twicker Cam to get a nice smooth interior that matches as much as we can to the, the, the roughly axed out exterior. Okay, so the next the next thing we have to do is to roughly axe out the shape of the um, of the fishtail handle. Now what we're going to do is we very, 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 very lightly marked on here. You can see, just see the pencil marks. I'm going to make them a bit. Um, I'm going to make them a bit darker. So we're going to be coming up here, and we're really going to get this quite thin at the top. What we're going to do, we've got a line coming down here. That means that we're going to, we're going to uh, narrow it from the bottom and the top. So we're going to get a curve in here, which will be where you put your hand when you're holding the cookser. Curve in here and then a slope down here. Now this is a little bit of a moment of truth on this rather large crack. So I'm rather hoping that we will remove, almost entirely remove all that because in fact, um, the, the cooks handle is actually quite thin and and one of the things that we've got to remember is that there there is a certain amount of balance between the the weight of the bowl and the weight of the handle so we don't want the handle tipping the bowl back so it's something that you you wouldn't need to worry about on a large cooker like this but on a smaller one and um, the the balance between the the weight of the handle and the weight of the of the bowl um, needs to be considered a little bit okay so what i'm going to do is um, I'm going to use the trusty axe and what I'm going to do is it looks a bit brutal but what I'm going to do is axe down axe away really all this material now what you might notice and probably you might have spotted all the chips on the floor is that actually um, a huge piece of wood that we, we started with most of that is on the floor. Now, basically, I mean, wood carving like this is often called whittling, but bowl carving is huge whittling. I mean, you get a piece of wood like this, we started off with a huge chunk of wood, and now, you know, it weighed quite a bit, and now it hardly weighs anything, because we basically chopped it all the way. This is what we're still doing. Now really for removing this amount of material, you know, knives are just not going to do it. You need, you need a pretty chunky tool and the axe is the only way to remove large amounts of material quickly. So I'm just axing, tilting the axe this way, that way, and then going up the middle just like before. I think there's a knot there. So I'm using it to extra bit of a persuasion. Just checking it all the while over, not over the you know, line, and also checking the end to see what's happened to this farmer. Scary looking crack. This is actually the reason why we don't have the ball up at that end. Now 
now you can see that we're slowly but surely we're edging edging away edging away that um, that crack and in fact I think we've bottomed it out now. Now the other thing about wood carving is that um, you very quickly have to recognise that you need to work with the piece of wood that you've got. Now you may you may start off with something that looks really rather see we're having to work away the the wood underneath a lot more than we might want to to get rid of that crack, you see. And that's the that's the whole point. The point here is that you need with this with green woodworking you need to work with the wood that you've got and all its imperfections. So although you might want I might have wanted more of a sweep on the top of this handle. I might not be able to get that now. Because basically it's not gonna let me. So I'm gonna have to so we've got to get rid of that crack. I hook of I crook. You see there's a crack, there's a piece of it broken off there, but fortunately it's most of it is on this um is on this bit at the end which we don't need. So very fortunate, I think we might be might be in a bit of luck. So as I said before, we're also going to take an angle off the top of the handle and angle it down slightly. Just conventionally that's how the handle goes and I think it gives it a nice counterpoint to the part the upper part of the bowl to have the sweeping sweeping down at the back and so crack the whole thing off. Like that. Okay, so we've kind of we've kind of given it a um, a bit of a, a tilt there, possibly less than we might wish, and a, a scoop out of here. We did all that with the axe. Now, of course, what we need to do now is just to mark out the um, the fish tail again, and if you remember. It was uh, we re-established this central line using our marks that we had before. There you go. Just re-establish that straight line. All the right to keep it. Oh, it's not very obvious. Oh, there. there we see it. Lights fading. It really has been a shocking day today, very, very stormy. Not the greatest time to be doing a, a training video, but there we go. So, re-establishing the centre bit, one and a half, is it? Is it the three in total across? There, okay, like that. The waist line, if you like. And then, it was six all the way, like that. So we had three, three, six, like that, uh -huh. like that, and then a little rounding off the top to give it that fishtail sweep, and then just re-establishing the line and the curve to meet the bowl. Like that, so just just re-establishing it so as um, you know we're, we're marking out. Now, I'm probably I'm going to cut this off now here and and mark it round and just get rid of that crack um, before I stop for the day. Hi, right, okay. Well, I have a bit of a confession to make. Um, that bowl that I was making the other day, that I was showing you, well, it did crack all the way into the into the actual bowl part of it. So I had to start again with a, a piece of cherry. 
So the nice thing about Cherry is it has a really, really nice, I don't know whether you can see that, really, really nice um, grain and, and there is a different colour between the, the heartwood and, and the sapwood. So actually, maybe it's a, a, a loss, but it's also a gain. So uh, I've got about the, the same kind of um, situation with the bowl as I, as I did the other day. I, I've carved it out. Um, I've smoothly carved it out with the Twicker cam. I've done a few adjustments with the axe around the, the bowl outside. I've cut in and I've actually shaped out um, the beginning of the, of, the, of the handle. What I haven't done is to attempt to cut off these sort of Batman ears. Now one of the things that you can, can do and go wrong with is if you axe away these these squared off bits which have helped when you've actually got it in, in this in this thing when you're when you're carving it out you can actually get a huge chip and that can be really very deep and it can write off the whole bowl so really at this stage uh, be very careful trying to axe these off leave it to the knife you've got much more control okay um so what you may have noticed I've not been wearing um, safety gloves up until now. Uh, I would advise them if you've if you've not done much wood carving before, but in in general the, the number of injuries that you get are very 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 small. As long as you you adhere to some basic rules, keeping your hands away from the axe and so on. But with the push knife work that I'm going to do on the outside, the number of times I've I've cut my fingers um, with the push knife accidentally is just worth my while wearing a pair of gloves. Okay, here's the push knife. Now, uh, this, is a, this is a very nice, a very simple push knife um, that it's been made by Mora Knife in, in Sweden. And, and uh, you can see that the bevel is on both sides, which means that you can push and pull. Um, and uh, a lot of people you make kindling out of these, kindling shavings. But um, we're going to use it today to shape the outside of the bowl. Now, as you can see, I've got a clearly marked out um, base of the bowl here. Um, so what we're going to do is, is move this way. So we're going to shave off and clean up and smooth off from there outwards, there outwards in a methodical way. A little bit like um, turning a bowl on a, a potter's on a potter's wheel we just keep rotating the bowl until we, we get the shape that we want so this is about shape refinement we've done much of the the shaping work with the axe okay here we go so we've got the, this push knife it's a little bit tricky i have to say um we, we just do this sort of action here sort of shaving and pushing ah the rain's back pushing 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 all the way down all the way down Turning the blade a little bit when we get there, just so as we we don't attempt to slice through the bows Batman ears, and it, it is possible, as I say, even with the, with the knife, to actually chip, cause a chip. So we've done one line down, and we do another, and we do, yep, yeah, all the way down. I should say this is, I find this physically, I find this one of the hardest. There we go, I'm shaving away at the Batman ears. And at this, at the front here, it's the hardest to cut because um, you're cutting right across at, at right angles to the grain. So it, the fibres of the wood are really resisting you. But as you can see, uh, the blade is very sharp and making short work of this. So this is a piece of green flowering cherry, I think, that we picked up from a village very nearby. So we were actually neighbours to this tree. Um, unfortunately, it blew down in the wind and had to be ruined. It's a bit of a shame for the, for the owners of the garden. Now what we're doing at, at each stage, as you can see, just with a, a little bit of work, um, if you can see there, you can see that it's smoothed that off really, really nicely. Um, 
it's really, as I say, just shape refinement. A little bit of a bulge there, and one of the things you'll see me doing is checking the thickness all the way. Now it is possible, even at this stage, to accidentally go all the way through into the bowl, especially at the sides where it can get quite thin. So just be aware every now and again, just check the thickness and make sure that not, it's not going too thin and all, also conversely that it's not too thick. So the, essentially what we're trying to do is match the inside shape with the outside shape. So we've got the nice, established a nice curved bowl shape inside. As I say, now we've got to try and match that shape on the outside. And I, I think this is what converts a, a reasonably good or average bowl into a great bowl. If you can get this bit right, it really does look excellent. So here we go, you see we're going all the way down, all the way down, coming down, 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 down to this bit which is quite thick, carving that down, there's a little lump I can see, carving all the way down, it's nice and green so it's, it's not resisting me. Now what you'll find is when you come so as the grains are going this way, the fibres are going this way, when you come down to here, this side, I want that side, what you'll find is that you've got the, the fibres are going at parallel to the, to the blade. And what you'll get is stuttering and chipping. So you've got to be a little bit careful and go make sure that you line your brain, that blade up, exactly with the line of the fibres. So you avoid excessive chipping and and um, if the wood is very very fibrous it can be, this bit can be quite tricky to get a nice smooth finish but you see what I'm doing I'm keeping parallel I'm keeping parallel with the fibers like that okay so what we'll do we'll just we'll just go leave it a moment and I'll we'll come back when I've progressed a little bit further. Okay we've come back now um, at a point where I've, I've really more or less finished the smoothing of the outside um, using the push knife and um, as you can see it's it's acquired quite a smooth um, quite a smooth outside. Um, it's also pretty much near the shape that I'm going to I'm going to finally have um, and and this in this case was governed by the by the by the shape really of the of the of the piece of wood that I was using so the outside shape of the outside of the tree the circumference of the outside of the tree has really dictated the um, the shape of the bowl really so we're really working with nature here what I've also done is to redraw back in the fishtail handle um, to, to work with now because I'm going to shape that. One of the things to notice at this point is that the, the cookser is still unbalanced so the weight of the tail is still too much so we're going to take some length out of that tail and we're going to we're going to carve it in here. Uh, what we're also going to do is to is to carve out under here and neaten all this very rough material here out, neaten it all up, bring a kind of a curve in there so it will then facilitates holding the cookster because that, this is essentially how it will be held like this. Um, final, the final finish will be um, to, to, to neaten up the top of this um, with, a, with a very sharp um, slightly crook knife um, is a long handled crook knife is what I use, we'll show you that. And then at the bottom what we also need to do is flatten this off. Probably use the same tool to do that. Just shave it off and get it nice and flat so it will sit nicely on the table. Now what I'm going to do, there's quite a lot of material on this, uh, the, the top, on, on the handle like this. Um, it would take a very long time to actually take it all off with with a knife. So 
what I'm going to do is just quickly axe off material that we don't want. So here I'm using what is called bump cuts, um, and you know, just ordinary cuts. But the bump cuts are very useful if you want to accurately follow your line that you've drawn. If you're a bit more confident with axing, you chop away. And what you've got to remember is you're cutting right across at 90 degrees for fibres again, so it's quite a tough job. Well, I'm doing this with an axe is much, much quicker than if you try to do this with a knife. I can absolutely tell you. The other thing you've got to be careful about is chipping. So again, when you come to the end, just stop short of the end and come back the other way because it's very easy to chip the end of your handle and then it's, it's kind of difficult to say because of course, the closer you get to your final, your final shape, the more difficult it will be to rectify any um, mistakes that you make. So just ax in that way there. Not the easiest thing in the world. Coming around like that. Just taking that off. Okay, still a little bit rough and ready, but that can be finished off with the knife. Like that. And already, just taking that little bit of extra material off, the cookser now more or less sits and it, and it doesn't fall over. So, ha, again, I'm afraid I'm uh, very prone to cutting my fingers at this stage. Um, the knife I'm going to use is a, um, is a Robin Wood. Uh, this... this um, this Robin Wood uh, more open um, curve knife wood tools. Um, I use this a lot really for finishing and, and so on. It also uses it for, for spoon carving, but it's very nice for finishing off the bowl. Um, so first up is is really completing the handle like so. Just coming a little, little bit of back back push strokes. Perfectly safe because you've got the body of the cookser in the way. You're not going to stab yourself in the chest. So it's a sort of twisting action, trying to establish a nice curve on this fishtail handle. Look at that, there you go. Much easier to work than the, the semi-dried um, sycamore that we were using yesterday. It's green, it's really probably was on actual tree just only a few weeks ago. So really very green. Here we go. Just establishing that curve. Like that. There we go. Just meeting the to meet to meet the, the, the two directions of cutting it's, if you just shave it 90 degrees across it finishes it off really nice and it cleans it up so same on the other side opposite direction the grain on this um, is quite is quite nice um, this is flowering cherry not um, not cherries that well, not the sort of tree that produces cherries, but flowering tree. Um, it's uh, carving really well. Of course, it's very green. Makes enormous help. <laughs> A lot of the wood that we get is comes from, obviously, it comes from managed forests, and a lot of that forest management occurs early in the year. Now. Um, this means, of course, a lot of your wood is going to come into your workshop early in the year and it's going to dry out. Now we've had a very, very dry, very, very dry spring and actually um, a, lot of them, a lot of the sycamore and the silver birch that we brought in, whoops, um, it's really dried out now and although it was green when we started, we're getting lots of really deep cracks 
and those can really cause us a problem because those cracks sometimes you think you've cut into the wood enough to get rid of them but as we saw yesterday they can start to open up while you're carving and cause all sorts of problems so this um, very very hot dry spring we've had has been nice but it's not done us done us any, any favors in terms of their uh, um, gold bulk up so there we go I've just cleaned that up a little bit, just a little bit to go to get the final shape, but, but now the weight of that tail is much better, a much better balance. Now, the other thing I said, we, we need to go under here. Again, we'll be car carving at, at right angles to the grain, but with the Robin wood, we can use it to really quickly remove this messy material here planing away, planing away like that in 90 degrees. If the blade seems like it's getting a little bit reluctant, what I, what I do is I just give it a little bit of a tickle up with a, a stropping board like this. This is a green stropping compound and simply with a um, uh, I guess the compound's a little bit like toothpaste, it's very fine grain, um, like toothpaste. And it's just like this, it's like a strop that a barber would use, Sweeney Todd would use. What I'm doing is backstroking the outer edge of the curved knife, flicking it, just finding the edge of the blade and easing it down the stropping board, twisting as we go. It's an action that will take a little bit of practice, but once you have, it's a great way of sharpening and keeping sharp your, your curved knives, which can really be a bit of a problem. People always ask me, how do you sh keep your curved knives sharp? Well, what I say to them is, I don't let them get blunt in the first place. And part of that is making sure you, you strop. As soon as you start to feel the blade working, working a little bit too hard, just give it a few stropping strokes. Now the curved blade you need also you need also a, um, a doweling. I think you could use a piece of doweling, stick an old piece of leather belt on there and again apply the green stropping compound and just remove the burr which is formed as we've stropped the outer edge. You just do the inner edge. Yeah. You know you're taking material because it goes black just very very little material and very often you immediately feel the, the results there you go you immediately feel the benefits of that strop, stropping the blades moving through the wood much much easier now so what i'm going to do now is get to that point it needs quite a lot of extra work will take quite some time the other the other thing as I said is is the base again it's just reaming reaming it flat trying to get it flat to match the upper edge of your coxa and on the top it's really then a case of of getting that wobbly very wobbly kind of top edge straight and with the large handle the long handle cooks it you can just sit it on the bowl like that and use it really to as a sort of to very very to keep the blade straight as you go around and do your your cleanup so it's a great way you just come around here it's a great way of cleaning up the top edge of your cooker Anyway, um, we'll leave it there just now and I will, we will do the final bit of the video where I show you the final product before it goes for boiling. Okay, I just thought I would show you the final product, let's say. Um, I've smoothed it all out as, as you've seen um, with, with the push knife on the outside and um, I've used this, the Robin Wood um, 
open curved knife to flatten off the bottom. I've really thinned out this uh, fishtail handle and as you can see it's now inclined downwards which gives it the right fit hold for when you're uh, eating or drinking out of it. I've also planed off the top of the the, um, the rim of the bowl to, to really neaten it up. Again I use the, the, the Robin Wood open uh, curved knife to do it. Um, and, and really and really that's it. Uh, it's a little bit under about it's about a half a millimeter half half a centimeter in thickness just about all the way around um, and really the next step now is that we will boil this for just over an hour in a, a very constant a concentrated solution of um, salt salt solution and and what that does is to um, it cures the wood, it relaxes the fibres and it reduces splitting later on during the drying process. Um, it also helps the drying process by, by drawing out, um, drawing out the, the moisture from the, the centre of the part of the wood. What it also does is to, is to remove quite a lot of the terpenoids and tannins that are naturally in wood um, which impart um, you know, this woody flavour to what you're eating and drinking. So it has multiple, multiple functions. Once you've boiled it for an hour, you then air dry it. You don't force dry it at all. Uh, don't put it in the oven or anything like that. It'll, it'll just crack. So what you've got to do is just leave it in a dry, warm room. Um, I mean, we've got an Argo in a kitchen. And it's absolutely perfect. And just sort of move in that room and it's, it's dry in two or three days. Because, because the walls of the bowl are quite thin, the drying process is, is quite rapid. Um, once it's dry, probably take about between three days and a week, uh, we apply walnut oil. So uh, this is food grade walnut oil and it's a drying oil. So it's not, it's not like olive oil that stays wet and if it stays damp it can go rancid. So that, that's not very good at all. So we found walnut oil to be both very easy to get hold of and, and reasonably cheap. So food grade walnut oil or food grade tongue oil as well is, is another good drying oil and that, that will protect your, your cook cell. If it's looking a little bit tired of, through use, just give it another coat of walnut oil and look as good as new. Anyway, that's it from me. Um, thanks for listening.